Okay, Mr. Cook, we kind of have a PR problem here. I was not aware of that. What seems to be the problem? Well, there's a lot. Most notably, there seems to be a lot of backlash from us supporting the Chinese Communist government and suppressing the human rights of their citizens. Yeah, but what seems to be the problem? That. Oh, that's not a problem. That's a solution so the Chinese government doesn't restrict our factory operations over there. We could lose billions of dollars if that happened. You should know that. Yeah. Yeah, you seen it that way is unfortunately the problem. It turns out people who are capable of empathy because they're not sociopaths see contributing to human rights abuses and suffering in the name of profit as wrong. I, I, I don't see it that way. Yeah, I know, and that's what we're wanting to work through here. Okay, you know how you worked with the Chinese Communist government to install a feature on people's phones that prevents them from using AirDrop? Yeah. Do you know why the citizens want to use AirDrop? Because it's an awesome feature that adds speed and convenience? Nope. It turns out they were using it to save their lives. How do you mean? Well, the citizens have started massive protests against the government who have stripped them of many of their human rights. They were using AirDrop to spread photos and videos of the protests in order to gain momentum so ultimately they can regain their rights. And the reason why they can't text the photos and videos is because the Chinese government has them under surveillance and would catch them, which could mean either prison or even being put to death. So that's why they were using AirDrop, just to save their lives. But then you took it away. Well, yeah, but the communist government wanted us to. It helps keep them in power over their oppressed people, which helps keep our business operations going as per usual in China. It's kind of like, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, and then together we break their legs. So that, that perspective of yours is unfortunately the problem. You see problems, I see problems for other people. Let's just move to another part of this fiasco and see if we can get some traction under our feet. Now, fuel was added to the fire when you refused to answer any basic common sense questions from a reporter recently. Yeah, I look pretty bad, huh? Yes, you did, sir. So let's just practice for next time. I'll give you each of the questions and you just give me your best PR friendly answer, okay? Oh, this'll be fun. Uh, you don't need that basketball, sir. Oh, I just thought it'd be more fun that way. Question number one, do you support the Chinese people's right to protest? Well, I got the right answer. No, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't want us to support the right to protest. Question two, do you have any reaction to the factory workers that were beaten and detained because they were protesting COVID lockdowns? Yes. The work output of those workers improved after the beatings. Those overachievers responded really well. Question three. Do you regret revoking airdrop access that protesters used in order to evade surveillance by the Chinese government? No. It was a very successful measure. It made Xi Jinping very happy. Now that's a guy you don't want to make angry. Final question, do you think it's a problem to do business with the Chinese Communist Party when they're suppressing human rights? No, we put at least $275 billion into China since 2016, and we've seen a great return on investment. They're actually really good to do business with. Those were the worst possible things you could say, sir. Really? I thought they were pretty good. I felt like I was in a flow state. No. So. Next time you're asked those questions, just say nothing like you did the first time. Oh, I have an idea. What? You know how we're currently having a worker revolt at our largest iPhone factory in central China? Yes. And how some of our factories require workers to work 24-hour shifts and sometimes stand the whole time? Yes. And how we've had to install suicide nets at some of our factories to stop selfish workers from disrupting our business operations. Yeah. And how one time we had those 140 workers injured because we made them use a poisonous chemical. Yep, we did that too. Oh, and also that one time we had four workers die in an explosion because we allowed aluminum dust to accumulate. Yeah, that happened too. So what if, and I'm just spitballing here, but what if we just like, Oh, I don't know. Just like, like beat them more and make them work longer shifts in worse conditions with more harmful chemicals around? The time's probably not right for that, sir. Could be more profitable. Not now, sir. Time's not right. Well, it'll be great when it is. Sir, the problem we're facing is just that we don't inherently care about people. So you're saying we should care less? 
sir, I think you're kind of a bad person and should run this company differently. Ow, what are you talking about? I'm not a bad person. I'm from Silicon Valley. I end all my meetings by saying namaste. Plus, I eat granola. I'm not very binary. And I do yoga and pretend it's real exercise. Oh, plus, it was my idea to sell Apple Watches with pride flags on them, which shows we really care. By the way, we made a lot of money off those dumb bastards that fell for it. Yeah. And most of all at Apple, we hate America and love communist China. I just think... Look, lady, at Apple, we say all the right things while doing all the wrong things, which typically go hand in hand. And the point is, we're worth trillions of dollars, so we're good. Sir. The Chinese Communist government is alerting us that protesting efforts are surging to a new high. All right, can we make our phones just like, maybe explode in people's hands like a grenade? That way we could take them out one by one, and that would help the Chinese government defeat these people, which would show we really care. Namaste. Stop.